But we're moving on. As of this week, it has officially been six months since Triple H has taken over as the chief content officer and has been the head of creative for WWE. Uh, because it's kind of six months and obviously it's still a little early, but I wanted to know, um, how do you feel the product has changed? Has the product changed since Triple H has become the head of creative at WWE? It changed subtly. It changed in like the aspect that uh, there's a lot of focus on the mid card titles, and the mid card titles do feel prestigious, and they do feel just as important, in my personal opinion, with the, with the way they've been booking Gunther, and they put on these long matches, uh, very good matches. I mean, Gunther is yeah. just fucking amazing. What he's so good, bro, that he made Braun look good. He had they had people on the <laughs> internet trying to put over Braun. All right, no, 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 no. That was Gunther. That was the magic of Gunther, okay? Don't you play with me. <laughs> anyway, back to my point. <laughs> back to my point. Because <laughs> I can go on a whole rant about Braun. Uh, yeah, no. Um, I feel like uh, I feel like there's been a, a wide focus on, yes, the mid-card titles, IC titles especially, yes, um, US title, yes. Um, tag team wrestling feels important. Like I, I know that was completely a triple H move for what they try to do with the new day. And I love that and support it. Um, I see his influence with the women, even though I don't think it's been a amazing job. Like you could see that as a bunch of triple H isms. I'm gonna call it H H H isms, but yeah. Um, Hunter isms. There we go. Hunter isms. Um, yes, I see a bunch of Hunter isms with, uh, <laughs> with, uh, you know, the formation of damage control with the returns of people like Tegan Knox and stuff like that and Emma. Um, but the bookings just haven't really been it with the women. It hasn't been something where it's like, all right, he's good with making the returns and getting a pop out of us with the returns. But then when it comes to like, like the meat of everything, the storylines, like I don't really see much investment. I think the best that it's got so far was what just happened on Monday um, with seeing Becky Lynch and Bailey go at it. That was actually fucking hilarious. But I mean, they're the four horsewomen. Like, duh. <laughs> of course, of course, they're going to put on a, an amazing freaking um, segment. Um, so I feel like they're, they are lacking with the women. Uh, Ronda Rousey's reign went on far too long, um, as did Liv's, in my personal opinion. Um, shit, I expect underneath, underneath Triple H's reign, Shayna would have had the belt by now, but it is what it is. Uh, the men, I feel like he's been doing well with the men in general. The bloodline is the best thing that's on all the brands. Um, like, uh, Sammy, Sammy is like literally the best fucking human out of the whole entire like show right now. Fucking love everything that Sammy's doing. Uh, that's been great. Um, otherwise I feel like, uh, raw, raw is very boring. It's still boring. I hope for better, but like I said, or you said, it's only been six months. So, uh, I don't know how much more time I could give him on trying to resuscitate the show. Cause what I, what I'm concluding off of watching Hunter is that he's much better at booking either like a pay-per-view or booking a short show, like how NXT 1.0 was. I think it was like, yes. what was it, an hour? It was an hour. Yeah. It was an hour, but, it, but it was a spicy good hour it was a where he was able to shove in. Yeah, very tangy, exquisite. Tangy. Um, <laughs> they were they were, they were able to. Um, I think he was much better because he was able to rotate and take time with telling stories when it mm -hmm. came to 1.0, and I think that he's struggling with having to paint out five hours, which I can't blame him because three hours is considered long for a movie, and to sit there and like have to book three hours for raw and then book two hours for smackdown weekly that's exhausting mm -hmm. and then it makes you think like how the hell did vince do it for so long so i don't want to be so hard on him because it's a difficult role i don't think he's bad at what he does i just think that he's better um when he's just given a smaller task like hey hunter just just book the royal rumble book uh you know another another pay-per-view 
book. You know what I mean? Like maybe just work on the mid card. Maybe just work on the woman. I feel like it's just a lot for him. So I give him like a C plus. C plus sounds just about fine in my book. C plus. What did what would you rate Hunter? I would rate Hunter as a B minus or a B. Um, I think that Oh, you're so nice. He, he spent he spent because there's one thing that I, <laughs> that you didn't mention that I feel like you should mention. So I feel like okay. yes, the women. Uh, I actually agree with everything that you said, but there were just a couple of things that he did improve on that weren't there before. Number one, like? factions. The return of LDF yeah. and bringing back Hit Row has drastically increased the depth of the tag team division and has also put certain people in positions to win those now established prestigious mid-card titles like uh, Escobar, you know what I mean? And with the SmackDown World Cup, they've been able to touch on character development on guys that were previously underutilized, like Mustafa Ali, like Ricochet. And I feel like yeah. they've been able to put a spotlight on guys that were underutilized, and but now they're slowly, gradually pushing them to being top guys right like ricochet with the you know being a part of the smackdown world cup and mustafa ali with his feud with now dolph ziggler they're giving him character development and but they're doing it in a way where they don't feel like they're just putting the rocket on them and just strapping them up to the top it's slow it's gradual it's building character development and it's utilizing guys that we know have been super talented um for super long but just never had the chance and I think stuff like that is the reason why um, I would give him a B. Also, just off of the return of Bray Wyatt uh, alone and his feud with L.A. Knight, um, I think is a reason to give him a B. And here's the reason why. Um, because back, one of the things that made the Ruthless Aggression era special and the Attitude era special is you had your championship feuds, you had your main event feuds, but you also had your B feuds in that same main event space, in that same top guy space. Feuds that weren't necessarily for a title, but because of who was involved, they had title implications. And they featured guys who, you know, even though they didn't have a championship, they were captivating and they were charismatic enough for you to still pay attention. We saw that with the Ruthless Aggression era when it came to Chris Jericho, when it came to Christian, when it came to, at times, JBL, when it came to, at times, the big show, Rey Mysterio. For some reason, that kind of got lost in the shuffle as, you know, Raw went to three hours. But with this L.A. Knight, Bray Wyatt thing, now we have two guys that you can see as main eventers, very charismatic, very captivating, in a feud that you probably wouldn't have got under Vince McMahon. And you can tell that they are moving towards championship gold but you can tell that they're just still developing them. I think that this more so, the reason why I say it's a B isn't necessarily because of the show quality. It's because you're starting to see the formation of a lot of things take shape. And I feel like the formation of these things are taking shape all the while Hunter is learning how to book for a three hour show. Not in the sense of like he didn't know how to do it before, but he's more hands on now than he was when Vince was in control. Right. He only had to worry about, like you said, an hour with NXT. So to go from one hour to five hours is insane. So I think that he's still finding his footing, but you can also see the formation of a lot of other things. Um and I think that that's really exciting. I think that that's really, really cool. But I, I agree with you. I think there are some ways to go. Um, there are some ways to go, and I'll keep on reevaluating. And of course, we're going to keep reevaluating. But I want to know what everybody else feels about Hunter. How would you grade his first six months as the chief content officer? <laughs> 